In this video, I will walk you through how to plot a multivariable function using GNU Octave or MATLAB. As an example, we can work with a simple two-variable function g equal to x e to the power of minus x squared minus y squared. To support my channel, you know what to do. Before I elaborate how to plot the multivariable function, I would like to briefly go over why we need to care about the multivariable functions. The multivariable functions are very useful mathematical description in the area of geology, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer to name a few. For example, to come up with the topological maps, we need to define the altitude at given latitude and longitude. In this case, the altitude g is a function of latitude x and longitude y, which is the multivariable function. The multivariable function not only serves the mathematical description, but also you provide a basis to lead the other useful information. For example, you can predict the slope of the topological surface by taking gradient of the given function. Similarly, you can define the fully potential at given x and y coordinates to further understand the potential source of the fluid flow by taking divergence. A heat map is another example to be used for the multivariable function for the temperature distribution. The local temperature T can be defined at given x and y coordinates, and the gradient of the local temperature can tell us the heat transfer rate for the specific direction. The similar description is needed in physics and electrical engineering, such as electrical potential. The local electrical charge controls the electrical potential nearby, and the gradient can lead to the electrical current and divergence can tell us the charge locations. Let's talk about how to plot the multivariable function. Since the given function expects to have g based on x and y, we are expecting to have 3D plot. To understand the 3D plot, I will start drawing conventional Cartesian coordinate systems. To plot given function z, we need to generate the coordinate x and y and z. The first step is to generate two vectors for x and y between the lower and upper bound, and then we need to generate the data points z based on the x and y coordinates. For a given function, we need minus 3 to 3 for x and minus 2 to 2 for y. For the demonstration purpose, I will use only 5 grids for the x and 3 grids for y directions. For your information, these small numbers of grids make the plot very kinky, but I chose very small grid numbers to show how the 3D plot works. Later on, I will increase the grid numbers for a smooth surface plot. The basic idea is to create a 2D array for both X and Y coordinates, and we can also create corresponding 2D array for Z based on given function. Since we decide to have 5 grids number for X direction, we have 5 grids on X direction. But at the same time, we have 3 grids on the Y direction. So we need 5 by 3, 2D array to create the multivariable function z. Here I visualized a bunch of numbers as a 2D array for x, but these numbers only for x coordinate. For example, we have all three in the bottom, since these represent the x coordinate for upper bound. Similarly, we have all minus 3 on the lower bound, since we need the minus 3 for x coordinate a lower bound. In between, we have minus 1.5, 0, and 1.5 to create grids. Similarly, we need a 5x3 2D array for only Y coordinates. But these are all Y coordinate numbers, including the lower bound minus 2 and upper bound 2. The 2D array shown here is based on the conventional 3D Cartesian coordinates. But in Octave and MATLAB, the lower bound should be given in the left column and the upper bound should be given in the right column. In the similar way, the 2D array for Y should be rearranged 
to follow octave and MATLAB convention, meaning the lower bound should be given in the first top row and the upper bound should be given in the bottom row. Then we can create the 2D array for Z coordinate based on given function. To generate the X and Y vectors, I would wipe off all the variables and close all the existing figure windows, if any. Then start defining the variables for the lower and upper bounds for the X and Y. To define the lower and upper bound of X coordinate and the numbers of grid for X, I will use XL, XU, and NX. Similarly, I will use YL, YU, and NY for Y coordinate. Next step is to create the vector for X and Y to create the data points for plotting. We can use the built-in function linspace function. This function creates the vector from minus 3 to 3 for 1 by 5 vector for equal spacing for x. You can see that you have minus 3, minus 1.5, 0, 1.5, and 3. You can also do the similar thing for y coordinate. As you can see, minus 2, 0, and 2. Now, what you have done is to define the vectors between the lower and upper bounds as a 1D array. But for the 3D plotting, you need to expand it to 2D array as I showed you earlier. You can do this manually, but you can also use the built-in function mesh grid. The mesh grid requires 1D array X and Y, and it will return 2D X and Y arrays. I use the lowercase x and y for the 1D array and the uppercase x and y for 2D arrays. The generated x and y are the ones that I explained earlier. The next step is to create the 2D array for z coordinate. Since we have 5 by 3 array for x and y, you are expecting corresponding 5 by 3 to the array for capital Z. To come up with a 2D array for a 2D array of X and Y, you can use element-wise operator for multiplication and exponentiation, since we need to calculate the Z value at individual X and Y coordinate. For screen recording, I have to increase the figure window size and I have to add the line number 8. Please ignore this for your practice. For 3D plotting, I will use the surf function, and this creates the surface of given function. This function requires 2D array X, Y, and Z coordinates. It will show the nice 3D surface plot for a given function. However, it is hard to recognize which is X and Y coordinate by looking at it, so I will add X, Y, and Z labels by using built-in function X label, Y label, and G label with a single character X, Y, and G for each. You can see them in the figure, but it's too small to really read. So I will increase the font size and line width using set function. Now you can clearly see it. Although you can see some plot, it's not as you expect it. So main region is we have limited number of grids. To increase the grid size, you can increase NX and NY, and here I will increase to 50 and 30 for each. When you rerun the script, you can see smoother surface than before. You can adjust NX and NY for your needs. To see the plot from the different angles, you can rotate the plot using rotating icon in the top left corner of the figure window. You can clearly see it from G versus X plane, G versus Y plane. Question comes, how to change the color of plot? You can customize the plot property. Face color followed by the color code as a single character insert function. For example, you can add face color followed by R as a single character to change the surface color to red. You can also change the transparency of the plot. 
You can use false alpha followed by the alpha value scaled between 0 and 1. And 0 means completely transparent, 1 means completely opaque. Here I use 0 0.5 and you can see a semi-transparent plot. Thanks for watching this video until the end and please subscribe my channel if you want to continue to watch tutorial videos in science, technology, engineering, and math. Please give thumbs up if you enjoyed. Please feel free to share your thoughts in comment section down below. See you next time.